In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use ClickUp to manage your content creation, not only for yourself, but also for your client work. And welcome back, my marketing buddies. My name is Jose Ricardo Rosado, and I work from a country most people can't place in the map, the Dominican Republic. So it would be nice for you to like, subscribe to this channel, and of course, leave any comments, any ideas that you have right there down below. So let's go. What I'm going to show you is how I manage ClickUp. And I'm going to show you how to create statuses for your tasks, how to create projects, how to create folders, and how to create spaces. And you'll understand everything in just a while. And if you don't know, ClickUp is an amazing tool to manage your projects. So it doesn't only just manage content, you can manage big, big projects with it. I use it for my content creation, for my personal stuff, for launch campaigns, for myself and my clients, because it's just that powerful. And the best thing is that it has a free version, which is incredibly powerful. I don't know how they give that thing away for free. Personally, I pay for it because it's like $5 a month, something like that. It's very inexpensive. And they also have powerful AI features that are also paid, but the free version is extremely powerful. And everything I'm going to show you today can be used with the free version. So let's go and let's get started right away. Let's start by showing you the user interface of ClickUp. On this left sidebar, you have your spaces. And think of a space as the different areas of your life, maybe, or as a big place where you can encompass everything by areas, by client, or by big projects, let's say. In my case, I have a client space, a space for myself, for my private stuff, and the lab, which is the space for me doing these experiments live. And of course, I have this one where I have a bunch of templates and stuff. And it's, as you can see, locked so that only I can have access to it. Now, within a space, you have folders and you have lists. And the way you create it is by clicking this button here. As you can see, we have the lists, we have the folders, and we have other stuff that I won't be covering today, but you can feel free to click it and see how it works. Anyhow, the way I like using folders is by naming it as a client. So that way a client can have different projects or different lists, or maybe, screw it, a whiteboard. If I click there, I have a whiteboard specifically for that client. Let's close this and let's delete it. Click here, delete. With all that said, this is how it looks like when you click on a folder. You have an overview of all of the lists within the folder, and you have a list with all of the lists or projects within the folder, and you have a board view, which shows you a Kanban board. And, it's, and a Kanban board is a very powerful productivity tool that if you don't know how to use, you should. It's very, very, very good. Anyhow, on this right side of the user interface, you'll find basically everything you need. Here you can add new tasks, you can create new automations, you can add a deadline for the projects or for the folders, and a bunch of things that I really don't use. Because most of the things that I do are here in the list view or the board view. But since we are within a folder, this is just too much information. I prefer to see things by projects or lists. So I'm going to click that right now. Now, every new list that you create usually have two views, the list view and the board view. And the way to create views is by clicking that button that you see right there. Let me show you that one. You click it and you have different view types. You have lists, boards, calendar, you have Gantt charts, timelines, and a bunch of things that really I also don't use like this one or workload. I'm usually with lists, boards, and calendar. Anyhow, let's go back. Now let's imagine that this is my content list. Let's rename it by clicking right here, rename, let's call it content. Let's go back to list. And now what I want to do is I want to add different status so that I can know where my content stands. And the way I'm going to go about that is by right clicking on this list, then putting my mouse on this list settings and then clicking the list statuses. And here's the thing. I can have a custom status for this project alone or this list, or I can create one for the space and the list itself will inherit all of these statuses. So in fact, I'm going to do that because usually all of my clients, I manage in the same way. So I'm going to click here, then more settings, then tax statuses. So now let's start adding statuses. To do is always the first one because it's still pending, right? Then I like calling this one doing, meaning that I'm doing it right now. Let's change the color. Then when I'm done doing things, I don't do or write or create and edit at the same time because it's too much for me. So what I do, I add a new status and I call it edit or editing. And that way I know I have to edit that task or that piece of content. Now, if you're working with clients, something I would love for you to do is add the following statuses. The first one, client approval, so that you know that this is being approved and it has been sent to the client. And the other one, client approved. That way you know that piece of content or that task has been approved by the client, but still has not been, let's say, scheduled or sent to production or any other subsequent task that you have in mind. In my case, I manage a team. So usually when the client approves something and it's there, the next stage is schedule. 
that means that the content is 100% ready and it just needs to be scheduled and that's it. And finally, the last stage, complete or done. I like renaming it to done. And here you see that you can have other done statuses. So if you can think of anything that's done but not closed, that's totally fine. This one closes the task, meaning that if it's done and it's in this stage, you will not see it here. It won't be visible on this list unless you click the show closed button. Anyhow, let's remove that by clicking right here. Let's save. And now let's say that I'm going to be writing tweets. Tweets week 44. Here, I'm going to be writing all of the tweets for the week 44 before editing it, before scheduling it. And the way this looks like is I click the tweets tasks and here you can see the task view. On this left side, you'll find all of the details of the task. And on this right side, you'll find all of the activity. So if you change something to to do, to doing, you'll see a change right here. You see that? So that way you know when this was done. And if you put your cursor on top of the just now option that you see here, it says that this was updated at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And yes, it's 10 p.m. right now. Now, what are the next things that you need to understand about ClickUp? Well, these are the parts that you're going to be using the most. The status, the assigned to if you run a team, when you want to complete the task or by when, you can see that as a due date. And here, you can literally write your stuff right there, your content. So let's say, let's write a tweet. I like doing this. I like adding a list. Content creation is key. Let's say that's a tweet. Content creation is the key, no content, no following, no online sales. Now, if you're running a team, the way I like doing this is, let's scroll down a little bit. I like adding a checklist by adding this key that you see right here, this one, and then this one, and then pressing space bar, one. And that way, if I click that checklist, bam, I know that this one is approved. And that way I don't have to create a task for one tweet. I can create 500 tweets, 300 tweets, 100 tweets in one single task and just do this, three, four, five. You see that? Add the tweet right there, new tweet, hit enter, another tweet, delete, and so on. That way I know the tweet number and I can tell one of my employees or you can tell one of your employees, hey, tweet number three has something that I don't like. Can you see how that works? Anyhow, let's assume that we're done writing the tweets. Next is, let's remove this first, it's clicking here and send it to the editing phase. Or you click that little button that you see here, that chevron, you click it, bam, and it's sent to editing automatically. And now you know that these tweets have to be edited. Let's assume you edited it and you send it to the clients. Well, client approval and so on. Then schedule. That means that this needs to be scheduled. Now let's imagine that the task is done. You have multiple ways to complete the task. You can click that button here, mark complete, and it's done. And as I told you, you won't see the completed tasks here unless you click show closed. And now you'll see all of the tasks. Now, as you can see the list, it's grouping your task by the status, because if you click here, you can group it by status, by assignee, by priority, by due date, etc. So let's add a few tasks here. This is a to do task, a doing task, editing task, client approval task, client approved task, schedule task. Let's close all of these things. So let's start assigning the status to each of these tasks. But first, let me duplicate this one by right clicking and duplicate, duplicate task. And let's do that once again, duplicate and let's duplicate it again. Now we have three doing tasks. And if I want to change the status of multiple tasks in bulk, I can just click here, here, and here. And as you can see, this just appear. And if you put your mouse on each of these little icons, you see that a description pops up. So now what I want to do is I want to change the status. So all we have to do is click here and set the status to doing. And now you'll see that all of these tasks appear in the doing status and it's organized in this way. Let's do the same for editing. Let's change it to editing, client approval, client approved, scheduled, and the to do is, well, it's going to stay there. Now, as you can see, all of the tasks appear in their respective status. But what if we want to change the order of these things? I don't want to see the done first nor the schedule. I want to see that last so I can see the things that are pending and the things that are being done right now. The way to do that is by clicking this option and then clicking here once again, bam, and it will flip everything with just one click. Now the to do is first and the to doing and then everything else. But what if you want to change the order of these statuses? Well, you can either change it globally in the space, which I'm going to do, or you could do it by the list by clicking here, list settings, and then list statuses. But I'm going to do it for the whole space by clicking here, more settings, task statuses. Now let's close this and let's say that 
we don't want client approval. Let's delete that. And we don't want client approved. Let's delete that. And let's add one more status, revise. And let's imagine that you have a team, but it's a team that works for you and you are not working for clients. They all work for your content. Well, you can have this revise stage or status right here between editing and schedule. So anything that's here, you know, has been edited, but you need to take a look before approving it for being scheduled. So let's click save. And since we deleted a few of the statuses, Clickup will tell us, hey, dude, <laughs> you just deleted this. So you need to decide what you're going to do with that. I would say, let's send it to revise. Just click there, revise, done, beautiful. Now, as you can see, everything is in the right order. Revise is above schedule, just as we saw it right here. But if we change it, save, you'll see now that it changes the order. But I don't want that, so I'm going to revert that change like that. Beautiful. Now, hopefully you can see the power of ClickUp, and that's not even all. Now I'm going to show you other things you can do on ClickUp to make this even more visual and easier to manage. Let's go back to our ClickUp account, and let's click on the board. Here you'll see the Kanban board, and here's one little trick. Let's click here to collapse the sidebar or press the Q on your keyboard, bam, and it's gone. Now, as you can see, the Kanban board is like you have the different statuses and you have these cards, and each of the cards are what? A task. And if you want to change one task from a status to another, you can just drag and drop it right here. And just like that, the task was changed to their respective status. So let's go back and let's say that we want to add a deadline. How can we do that? There are multiple ways. First, in the list, here you have the deadlines. You can literally just click here, due date, and say it's for the 24th and you're done. The other way is literally clicking on the task, clicking on dates and changing it to some other day. Beautiful. Or the faster way, if you have to do it in bulk and they have the same deadline, you can select here and just find the calendar option. Set dates. Let's say it's, the, it's for the 27th. Beautiful. And the beauty is that you can do the same thing in the board view by clicking board. And then here, you just put your mouse on top of the task and you can change the deadline by clicking right here and saying it's for the 31st, let's say. Awesome, right? And as you can see, each of the tasks in the board view has have like a preview, right? You can see that I can see the deadline, I can see the date, I can see the space, the folder and the list to which it belongs. But how do we change what we see here? Well, unfortunately right now we can't do that in the board view of ClickUp, but you can do that in the list view. You click here and here you can add more stuff to the list view. So let's click here and let's add a few columns. We can show and hide things that are already there. For example, comments, date closed, and these things that you see here, deliverable type and SOP, that's for another lesson. This is what we call custom fields. I'm going to show you everything about that later on in a future video. But for the moment, this is how you manage your tasks on ClickUp. You have your spaces, you have your client folders, and you have your projects or lists. And every list has its tasks and its views. Here we have the board view and the list view. And as you know, you can always change the statuses by right clicking on the list or the space or the folder and then click list settings and then list statuses and just moving things around. Let's pick this one once again, let's save and we're done with these things. And by the way, another way you can change the status of a task is just by drag and dropping it right here, bam, and it's done. So there's so many things you can do with ClickUp that I just can't tell you how beautiful this app is. I use it for my automations. I use it for even creating content with ChatGPT and tie it up with Sapier, which I'm going to show you in another future video. There's so many beautiful things you can do with ClickUp. And I encourage you to learn more about that and manage all of your content there, because think about this. You can have all of your content in one central place and then just send that to be edited by a copywriter or someone that can spell check better than you, or even ClickUp AI. They have an AI version, which costs you like an extra $5 per user. And if you want to use that, use it because it's very, very powerful. On top of that, you can start adding your SOPs, standard operating procedures, your templates, your products, managing launch campaigns, everything you can think of, you can do that in ClickUp because it's much more than just a content management system. It's a full scale project management software that you can use for managing big teams, small teams, personal stuff. I manage all of my to do's here from things that I do with my family, from things to that I do privately with my clients that my other my employees don't know about. And of course, the different errands that I have to do every day, it's all there on ClickUp because it's a beautiful app that can manage your life in a very, very simple way. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Cesar Ricardo Rosal. And as always, like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have a question. Talk to you soon.